Welcome. I'm Ed, CEO and co-founder of Overnest. At Overnest, we believe that you should encrypt everything and search anything. Today, your life and data are stored online. They're not just headlines. They're your bank accounts, your health records, and photos of your kids. They're personal, they're private, and nobody wants them getting hacked. Of course, enterprises protect them by using software. And the crown jewel of software is source code. Source code is proprietary information. They are intellectual properties. They are also proprietary algorithms. They are also, also the work, um, workflow of your application that runs your business. Sorry, I'm a little bit nervous. Doing good. <laughs> Thank you. For those of, those of you who are excited about artificial intelligence, source code is the brain. So enterprises, of course, they protect their source code. Currently, they protect by building walls and building alarms. The reality is anything that can be hacked will be hacked. Walls can be bypassed, and alarms only alert you after the fact. So as a result, last year alone, over 700 million records were stolen. So why was only 4% of those data encrypted and safe, and why was nobody encrypting their source code? Because if you encryption makes your data completely unsearchable and unusable. So for a software team, all the core functions that you're used to become essentially impossible to do. Therefore, for any enterprise, they have to make a choice between convenience and security. Until now, my team and I, we were the founding engineers of FireEye. We worked on enterprise security and software for over a decade. And in the last year, we built the world's first practical searchable encryption technology, OverNest. OverNest allows you to search on encrypted data as easily and as quickly as Google can search on web pages, all without revealing your key, and it's very secure. In fact, we built our encrypted search on industry standard AES-256, which will take over a billion, billion years to crack. And our security has been vetted by top cryptographers at both Stanford and Johns Hopkins. Today, I'm happy to announce Git Zero, the world's first encrypted Git hosting that not only encrypts your source code, and at the same time allows you to search while it's all encrypted. When a user uploads her um, source code to Git Zero, Overness technology will encrypt the files and build an index. Think of an index as basically like a dictionary, except instead of the meaning of the words, it's really the location of the file. And when the index is also encrypted, so when you search, it will go through a probabilistic model to pinpoint exactly where the file in the index the location is. My co-founder now, Michael Lai, is going to demo Git Zero. Demo, please. Uh, Git Zero is enterprise Git encrypted. Git Zero is easy to set up and uses the same Git workflow that you're already used to. But let's talk about Alex for a second. Alex is in charge of information security at a large enterprise that has sensitive source code they want to protect. The good news is, with just one command, Alex can take an existing unencrypted repository and migrate it to gitzero.com. Let's take a closer look at what's happening here. The gitzero client is downloading Alex's existing source code. It's encrypting it and all of its history and generating an encrypted index so that Alex can search his code. Finally, Alex can choose to upload his encryption key, but not before password protecting it so that nobody, not even Git Zero, can use it. 
Back on the dashboard, we see the project that Alex has created. Alex can view his commits, his history. He can also view his files. He'll need to enter his key password. And this is basically a decrypted file in your browser. If Alex wants to search for something, he can do that too. Those are his results. Uh, let's try this with something else. And there you have it. Encrypted search on an encrypted source code repository. Back to the slides. Here's the role. Is the is only just the beginning. We want to show how the cloud security and on-premise privacy can coexist. It's already on public, so try, sign up. And or we already have university, tele telecom, and also startup users. Gizero.com. Thank you. Nice work. <laughs> All right. So among the judges, you sounds like you followed. Okay, good. So uh, cool demo, guys. Thank you. It seems like the, the novel innovation here is searchable encryption. Yes. You chose to deploy that in your first product as an uh, enterprise searchable Git repository. Why did you choose that? Uh, you know, that's a market that has some competition today already, not with the specific feature of searchable encryption, um, but why, why that market? Um, initially, because we also developers ourselves. We needed ourselves when we started a company. And also because even though there are competitors, but none of them encrypts their source code. Nobody. I mean, it's zero. Got it. But um, is there? I'd be curious to just your right. your view on how big the market opportunity is. The real question I'm, I have here is: Is this a feature of some existing, you know, large Git repositories for enterprises that people already pay for today, or are people willing to adopt Git Zero just for this one feature? Yeah. Uh, I believe people will be willing to adopt it. There are a lot, a lot of large companies, including some that I've worked for, that host uh, their repositories in-house using GitHub Enterprise or, or Bitbucket uh, sort of on-premise solutions. Uh, none of them really enjoy doing that because they actually have to maintain the software. Uh, updates are slow. Um, they need to have someone on staff who can sort of help maintain it. Uh, we are basically coming in with a solution that allows you to have the scalability and reliability of the public cloud, and we'll manage all of the infrastructure for you. Uh, but their biggest concern, which is data privacy, is sort of solved by the fact that we have encryption at rest. And does that suggest that the best target initial verticals are ones where you know, the teams are highly distributed, therefore the on-prem, because the best way to solve this right, is, is what you described, the on-prem version so you can protect your code. Are you targeting certain verticals where you think both the value of the source code is high as well as the nature of the teams highly distributed? Uh, we haven't thought so much about the nature of the teams, but you're right. Um, sort of enterprises, uh, on-prem solutions are, are the target right now. But you do make a good point if we, uh, I, I do believe that highly distributed teams would be a good case too. Yeah. It felt like a lot of the motivation in the security space, at least from the enterprise side, is driven by awareness of problems and break-ins. Everybody knows about all the target data that came mm -hmm. out. Like, I, you, you guys are probably more knowledgeable as, than I am, but I, I don't know of too many instances where actual program source code, are, are, are there big examples that are out there in the press of source code being stolen? Juniper is a very good example. Yeah. So Juniper has a backdoor inserted in its source code, which actually is the source code for, interesting for VPN. <laughs> for uh, so uh, so that does happen, and uh, there are so it's not so just somebody put something in versus right, stealing something. Right, okay. right. So it's actually not just the theft; it's also the modification. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I uh, my question is on, along the same lines. But how do you think about going to market? You know, what do you think about who is your target, and ultimately who's making the decision? So ultimately, it's definitely going to be the CSOs and CIOs um, of the company because there, there, are, there are other people who cares about security. Um, in the same time, because we're developers, we understand that if you make it very difficult to use because of security, developers are going to hate it and go around it. And so what we do is say, make it it's completely, literally transparent. For a developer, you really couldn't even tell your code was, uh, was encrypted. That was uh, the angle we're going after. Any final questions? 
Well, thank you very much, Kid Zero. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, guys. One more time, Kid Zero. Hey, thank you.